The GNOME experience is very, very simple by default. Too simple, some people would argue, but that doesn't mean it has to be this way. GNOME not only has the best app ecosystem on Linux right now, but it also has an insane set of extensions. So today we'll look at the best GNOME extensions I could find that can completely transform how you use your GNOME desktop. And of course, if I missed something that you use and love, don't hesitate to let me know down in the comments. And I won't hesitate to let you know about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Chasm Workspaces, which is a great tool to stream any operating system, desktop or application straight to your web browser. They just released version 1.14, which adds translations for 243 languages, along with a completely redesigned administrator user interface to streamline administrative workflows. Additional updates include support for local webcams and printers, plus the ability to persist your data to cloud storage drives, like Google Drive, Nextcloud, or OneDrive, along with saving your persistent profile to S3 block storage. These updates make it easier than ever to host on-demand access to your desktops and applications. The Chasm Workspaces Community Edition can be self-hosted, or they also have a cloud SaaS subscription. So to learn more about Chasm Workspaces, click the link in the description below. If you use the keyboard a lot, GNOME has tons of keyboard shortcuts, but what if you're a mouse user first? Then you have FlyPy. It's a circular menu that you can use exclusively with your mouse. You can completely customize it. As a matter of fact, you kinda have to. How it works is just moving your mouse in the general direction of an item, and clicking to expand it. Each item can contain sub-items, so you can use it to launch commands, applications, go to the next audio track, switch between apps, move between workspaces, close the active window, whatever you want. You can also just maintain the click to select items and sub-items with gestures. And as you get familiar with it, you end up memorizing these gestures. You move your mouse in specific patterns to launch specific things. By default, you can press Ctrl plus space to open it, but you can change that shortcut. It also works on Wayland, but you will need to create a custom keyboard shortcut that launches the command I left in the description of the video. The menu is entirely customizable in terms of appearance, colors, size of elements, and structure. That thing even has achievement. I'm, I'm not joking, it really has them. So it's a fun way to interact with your system with your mouse. I think it helps building muscle memory to launch certain things or commands. And for accessibility purposes, it's probably really good as well. Oh, and to install it, you just need to look for it in Extensions Manager, the app that lets you install GNOME extensions in just one click. Now, if you like tiling your windows, but GNOME's options are too limited, there is Forge. If you're familiar with Pop! OS's auto-tiling extensions, it does pretty much the same thing. Each new window opens in a new tile, and you can either drag and drop them using the mouse to reposition them and create your layout, or you can use a long list of keyboard shortcuts to do the same thing. Which is sort of the point of a tiling window manager, how many people use these things with their mouse. Forge also adds a highlight around the currently focused window, and it also supports floating windows for smaller preferences that would look weird if they were tiled. You can tweak the gaps between windows, the colors of the various hints when moving a window, or the hint for the focused one. It's a really powerful extension, and since Pop! OS's set of extensions might not be fully compatible with GNOME 44, and will probably get entirely discontinued when they release their own cosmic desktop, I think Forge is the next best thing. Okay, now this one is not an extension, it's an application, but it is solely focused on changing the look of your desktop. If you're okay with the default Advaita theme in GNOME, but you would like it to be more colorful, or if you're just a fan of Material U on Android, then there is Gradients. This app lets you apply color palettes to the default Advaita theme of GNOME. It won't change the shape of the buttons or the controls, but it will tint everything with colors of your choosing. Which means you can get something that looks really nice or something absolutely garish, depending on your tastes or lack thereof. You can install Gradients from Flathub, and it lets you either pick each color yourself, or you can let it create a color palette from an image. It will apply all these changes to all your GTK4 and GTK3 apps, provided you have the ADW GTK3 theme installed. 
It can even apply an Advaita theme for Firefox in the process, so the browser can follow your color scheme as well. There are a few drawbacks, like needing to log out and log back in for the changes to be applied. And once you've set your color palette, switching from light to dark mode will definitely break contrast. But it is still a nice way to give your desktop some personality without breaking your applications with a theme that will never be able to work on every single app flawlessly. Since Gradients only changes the colors of the libadvita theme, then it means the worst that can happen is that contrast is poor and applications are not very legible, but you can't break the layout of entire applications. You can also save your presets to switch to them more easily and move back to the default color scheme if you want, as presets already exist for them. Gradients will also theme your Flatpak apps if you have the necessary overrides in Flatseal. It won't change the colors for the GNOME shell itself though. Now, if what you're looking for isn't necessarily a complete transformation of your desktop, but more a bunch of small tweaks here and there to improve how it looks and how it works, then what you need is the Just Perfection extension. It comes with a few profiles to reduce the size of the top bar or get rid of it entirely, but you can also have complete control over everything. You can hide the top panel, you can hide the activities button, the app menu, the clock menu, you can hide various indicators or the quick settings entirely. You can hide the icons inside of the quick settings or the items that appear in the clock menu or even how the window picker looks. You can hide various icons throughout the interface or even change how things behave, like removing the this application is ready notification or starting GNOME on the desktop instead of the overview. You can also enable wraparound for workspaces and a lot more. Finally, Just Perfection lets you change a lot of various variables, like the panel size, the panel icon size, the padding between indicators, the position of the clock menu, the speed of the shell animations, the size of dash icons, the position of notification banners, the on-screen display elements position, and more. Basically, if there's any detail you do not like in GNOME, you can change it and tweak it with Just Perfection. Now, of course, if you don't like GNOME at all, then this won't help, but if that's the case, then why are you watching this video? Now, if the default Alt-Tab window switcher doesn't work for you, then there's AATWS for Advanced Alt-Tab Window Switcher. This thing is the just perfection, but for Alt-Tab. It changes how the window switcher and the application switcher works. You can choose the position of each at the center, bottom, or top of the screen, choose on which monitor they appear, and how everything looks. You can then further customize the window switcher and the app switcher. For example, you can group open windows by application, hide minimize windows, and only display the windows for the current monitor. It basically gives you complete control over how you switch between your windows or between your open applications and their windows. Seriously, it's like KD level of preferences here. You also get a hot edge that you can define to show the switcher, and it can double as your dock. You don't even need something like dash to dock if you have this extension. It even has its own keyboard shortcuts to search through open windows or apps and filter what is being displayed. It is a really, really cool extension if you want to use GNOME with a more keyboard-focused workflow. You won't need to touch a mouse to switch between anything here. But if you prefer using your mouse to do stuff, then maybe you're lamenting the lack of hot corner functionality in GNOME. Thankfully, you have CHCE for Custom Hot Corners Extended. It lets you define actions for pushing your mouse in any corner of the screen, including with modifiers. You can define an action for when you just place your mouse in the top right corner, or when you do that while holding control, or while clicking any of the buttons, or while scrolling the mouse wheel. The list of actions is insanely long, from window management to workspaces, switching windows, changing window opacity, or even system features like toggling the magnifier, displaying the on-screen keyboard, moving to the next audio track, or even displaying custom menus of your choosing. These are configured directly in the extension settings and you can basically create a context menu with a bunch of actions from the same list as what your hot corners can trigger. This is super powerful stuff. You could probably create a layout where you don't even have a dock or a top panel or anything and do everything using custom menus in each corner. Now, another app, not an extension, is Login Manager Settings. This one lets you tweak, as its name implies, the login screen of GNOME. 
It gives you options to theme it, to change the background image, the fonts, or change a few options for the top panel. You can change the sound theme, enable a few mouse-related features, like disabling pointer acceleration or turning on nightlight. You can even display a welcome message, you can disable the user accounts list, you can remove the restart button, you can change the behavior of the power button and of automatic suspend. And you can even export your settings to a file to import them back into another device or when you reinstall. It is a very nice tool to just have a coherent behavior between your GNOME desktop and the login screen you use to access it. Now, if you need a clipboard manager to keep track of everything you copy, Pano is probably the best looking one. It's an extension that lets you display all the elements you copied in a visual manner as a strip at the bottom of your screen. It does require you to install two small libraries, libgda and libgda sqlite. But after that, all you have to do is press shift, super and V and you'll see that nice little strip at the bottom. You can customize how that strip looks like and it supports links, text, emojis, files, images, code snippets and color values. All of them having their own display style to be identified easily. You can change these styles independently as well through the extension's preferences. It even has an exclusion list to avoid displaying elements from specific apps like password managers, for example. It is a really, really nice extension that will definitely improve your workflow. I know it improved mine a lot. Okay, let's finish this video with a few miscellaneous extensions that aren't as powerful, but still add a few cool tweaks. First is Searchlight. If you like the GNOME Shell search, but you wish it didn't go into full screen, then Searchlight gives you just that. It's a launcher or spotlight equivalent. You can change the keyboard shortcut and the appearance of the search box and the results. Then you have rounded window corners, which will round every corner of every window, even for apps that aren't GTK4 and aren't natively rounded. It even gives you control over the radius or if you want to keep rounded corners in full screen or not. And if certain apps don't react well to that, you can always blacklist them as well. I use this one on every single device I run GNOME on. It does wonders to unify the look of every single app that you run. Now, if you're missing these awful desktop icons, then you can also add them back with desktop icons NG. It's super customizable and it restores that functionality if that's something you enjoy. It's actually the extension Ubuntu ships by default to get their desktop icons. And that's about it for this video. These are just a subset of all the available GNOME extensions that you can use to really transform your desktop. They're just the ones that grabbed my attention the most. And of course, if you use something else, don't hesitate to let me know down there in the comments. And I won't hesitate to let you know about our sponsor. If you've ever had Linux hardware compatibility problems and you're planning a new purchase to replace your current computer, and you still plan to run Linux on it. Stop buying devices that only support Windows out of the box. Buy something from Tuxedo from the link in the description below. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux pre-installed. The hardware was picked specifically to run Linux perfectly and they actually contribute patches upstream to make sure that this support will be available for everyone. They have a big range of devices from laptops, desktops, NUX, affordable stuff, gaming stuff, workstations, anything you can imagine. They are all very customizable in terms of the internals, the keyboard layout, your own logo engraved on the lid, and all the laptops are openable, repairable, and upgradable. So if you need a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, and you want to actually support Linux's development, click the link in the description below and get yourself a Tuxedo PC. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, there's always that thumbs down button and you can also tell me why in the comments. And if you really like the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links in the description below to do just that. You know how this works. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.